As you all may know, Ningo starts from an object recognition system. The video feed from a webcam is processed and the program draws boxes and labels to show the objects that it recognizes. Namdu-san creates this program in episode 2, and as a fellow software developer, I couldn't help but wonder, how hard could this be? Now, I think I am pretty competent at coding, so I decided to spend this weekend to give it a shot. As you can see, here is the completed model. It is deployed on the website stevenyell.me slash real-time object detection, and this will be linked in the description. But check it out. Here's the model. It can detect that I am a person, that I'm holding a cell phone, and it thinks that the ceiling fan is an airplane, but of course, all models have a little bit of error. Another cool thing is you can also access this on your phone. So just head to the same website, allow access to your camera, and here we go. So the very same object detection Python software that you see on the web in your own hands. It's so cool how such a small device can handle such powerful machine learning. And we can bring this around and check out what this model thinks many th items are. So let's look at the couch. And you can see that the model detects that it's a couch. How about something like a bottle? Let's check out this bottle we're just lying here. There we go. It works. Um, how about something like a television? Yeah, it's working. So there are some objects that this thing has trouble detecting, like for instance, the fan, it thinks it's an airplane. But generally this software works pretty well. And before you click away, allow me to explain how I was able to develop this model in about five minutes. How was I able to develop such a complicated model so fast? Well, the answer lies in building on top of software that people have already done. So in this project, I used the TensorFlow Object Detection API, which has already been developed by the experts at Google for about 10 years. And all I had to do was pass a couple frames into their API, and the API would tell me exactly what objects it thinks it is, and also tell me the box surrounding it. So in reality, I didn't really need to do any of the machine learning myself. I just kind of had to connect two items together. My code is also hosted on GitHub if you want to check out the model yourself and create your own AI solutions. But this project did show me something very important about how all this complicated software can all just be done by even a beginner. Because in reality, it's just literally two or three lines of code. So anyone can learn this stuff. It's all accessible. All this complicated machine learning that no one would have dreamt of 10 years ago. Now it's all within our fingertips and that's just exciting. So hopefully I'll be able to create more projects like this in the future. I mean, I definitely will considering how quick and simple this was. But I'll be sure to bring you guys on this journey as well, making websites along the way so you guys can also experience these technologies. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. These videos take a long time to make, so I would appreciate it a lot if you would drop a like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.